Okay, so I'm going to draw this tripeptide under different conditions and hopefully that'll help you put amino acids together. So it's ASN, it's the amino acid that we're doing, ASP, so this one and this one, and the phenylalanine on the other side. All right, um, so they're amino acids. This is a little bit blurry. You can see the amine, the middle carbon, and the carboxyl amino acid. Okay, so we have to do those one after another. So it's always the amine. Amine, come over here, I've got a lot of room. Amine here. So the middle carbon and the carboxyl group carbon. And then the next amine, the middle carbon, and the carboxyl carbon, the next amine, the middle carbon, and the carboxyl carbon. So you drew that out straight to start with. Um, but you didn't fill in the others. So um, it's the amine is NH2 and the carboxyl, to make it the acid, COOH, NH2. Okay, so these two are going to bond together and make a water molecule. So we get rid of the OH from here and the H from here and that's our peptide bond. It's an amide bond but because you found an amide bond between amino acids it's called a peptide bond. Okay. So it makes a water mole molecule each time you join amino acids. So there's another peptide bond here. C-O-N-H. 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 All right. People were getting this confused with um, the ester. So don't get esters, which are between carboxyl, groups and alcohols confused with um, the amide bond. There's two oxygens here so we'll take off one of the oxygens to make the water molecule which leaves the other oxygen and the carbon forming a bond. Okay, so if I bring this group over here, you've got the COC. All right, so people were getting the Q, this O, confused with the this O here. All right, so there's not COO. So some people were putting the oxygen here from the carboxyl group, leaving it in the middle because you got used to doing that with an ester. So don't make that mistake. All right, so it's C-O-N-H and the O is double bonded. All right, so we've got our three amino, amino acids um, and the second carbon. So they're all two amino acids. So our middle carbon here has got four bonds. Don't forget the hydrogen bond down the bottom. I always forget that one down the bottom. Um, and then each of the amino acids has got the side chain. So the side chain for ASN is um, C, H, if I draw the whole thing out, um, and then another carbon, and oxygen. So these bonds would not be in the at the angles that I'm drawing them, but I'll just draw, as long as they're connected correctly, um, each carbon's got four bonds and this bond is drawing, you know, directly to the nitrogen, which has got three, that'll be fine. So don't worry about the angles, you can draw it straight up if you like. So each side chain straight up. Um, this is a, an amide bond, C-O-N-H-2, um, but it's a primary amide. But it's not a peptide because it's not between amino acids. All right, so our uh, aspartic acid 
is an acid, so it's got a carboxyl group on the top of it. C O O H. Don't worry about the bond angles. And then our phenylalanine. It's this one. It's got a ring and a CH2. So the CH2, don't forget the CH2. And then um, if we were drawing the ring, rings have got each carbon from the carbon to the other carbon is like a triangle in straight lines and then another triangle. That's kind of the easiest way to draw them. Um, so I wanted you to draw all of the elements and um, all of the bonds. So we'll draw it with the carbons in. So we've got a carbon, 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 like a little triangle straight down to another little triangle. All right, each carbon makes four bonds. So we've got one, two, three, and then that extra electron. One, two, extra electron. There's a hydrogen for the fourth bond. So each carbon's got one hydrogen for its fourth bond. And the other bond is between these electrons. Um, so these electrons can form a bond, a double bond here, or this electron can form a double bond here. So I could draw this like this, or I could draw the double bond here. So basically what they do is do a circle to show that those electrons are delocalized. All right. The point of these electrons is that um, you have one electron sharing with one of these. So there's not another element. There's not two hydrogens forming on here. So it's one, two, three, four. All right. So this is our nonpolar side chain. Um, these are polar because they're slightly negative, the electronegative oxygen and nitrogen, electronegative oxygens. So these are polar side chains. This one is also the acid because it's got the carboxyl group on it and the hydrogen comes off. This could be basic because it could accept an extra hydrogen. All right, so at the moment I've drawn it um, as it probably would not appear under any conditions. So if I were to do it under whatever pH would be neutral for it, under neutral conditions, the, hate, the hydrogen from this carboxyl group, these are two electrons being shared at the moment. So this electron from the hydrogen is, stays here and makes that excuse me, negatively charged. And then the hydrogen without its electron goes over to here. There's a lone pair of electrons on your nitrogen. Nitrogen's got five electrons in its outer shell. Two of them are forming a lone pair. So these two electrons can form a bond with that hydrogen. So that hydrogen um, didn't have its own electrons. It was just a proton. So it's brought its positive charge over here. Okay, we write the positive charge on the nitrogen because it's kind of shared amongst all of these. It's not on any particular hydrogen, so it's shared around. So we just put it on the nitrogen to show that it's shared. You must put it here and not write it next to any hydrogen in particular. Um, so this is a zwitterion. Zwitterion. Well, it's a huge zwitterion. Um, I think zwitterion Zwit means neutral. I'll have to look it up. It's a neutral iron, which is kind of an opposites a bit. It's got charges, but because it's got one positive and one negative, it's got the same char charges that cancel out, so overall it's neutral. I'll have to look up and see if that word means neutral. Um, all right, so I asked you to do it under basic conditions. So under basic conditions, um, We've got our pH scale, so pH 7 is neutral, but f as far as we're concerned, it's not necessarily 7 where this neutral ion occurs. It depends on the side chains as to where that happens. So it could happen more this way or more this way. So at some point, that will happen. 
So from that point, if we make it more acidic, then we've got extra H plus floating around in the environment to add. So we can add this back to wherever we can. So it's been lost from here. So if it was more acidic, we would add it back. So you add H pluses when it's more acidic. And when you add it back, that's not charged anymore. This is positive. So when it's more acidic, the whole thing is positively charged. Okay, if it's basic, under basic conditions, um, there's lots of hydroxide ions around to accept hydrogen ions. So we would lose hydrogen to these. Okay, under more basic conditions. So we would remove hydrogens, remove lose hydrogens. So we could lose one from here and that would become negatively charged. Don't forget the charge. And we could lose this positive one that we had added before. So then that's neutral now. I'll get rid of the lone pairs. That might be confusing. All right, it's neutral. This is our carboxyl group. So you need to check out your um, Ooh, actually, when I go back, when it's acidic, I could have added a, a hydrogen here because this will act like a base. So I could have added, this would have been plus, and so two pluses when it's acidic. So this is um, an acid, carboxyl acid. So when it's um, basic, you would take this one off as well. So actually, this combination whether it's acidic or basic, will affect both of these groups. So you're removing it, so it's extra negative, and you would add, be adding it, so it would be extra positive. And if it was neutral, then you don't look at the side chains, ignore them, and you take one from here and put it over there. Okay, so you've got one of each. Whether it comes off this one or comes off this one, is, is beyond us at the moment, but as long as you've taken it off one or the other. All right, the one on the end of the chain, this amine group, amine group on the end of the chain is called the N-terminal. And the carboxyl group on this end of the chain is called the C-terminal. So whether it comes off a C terminal or whether it came off, this would depend. Um, I asked you to circle, circle the peptide bonds. So this is the bond, but it's only formed, this bond is only special because of these groups on either side of it. So you need to circle the whole thing. Okay, so that's a peptide bond. And this is another peptide bond. So this is a tri-peptide because it has three amino acids. But strangely enough, a tripeptide has two peptide bonds. And a dipeptide would be between two amino acids. It would have one peptide bond. So this name is a little bit um, misleading. All right, this is a tripeptide. So it's under different conditions. At the moment, it's under basic conditions. If we wanted to make a section of a protein, so if we have, this is a primary primary structure, so it's just primary structure of a, pro, of a polypeptide, polypeptide, in this case it's a tripeptide because it's got three. So primary structure is um, amino acids, Acids covalently bonded, whoops, covalently, so sharing electrons, covalently bonded by peptide bonds to form a chain. Okay, so that's the primary structure of a tripeptide. If this was um, a section, so if you see this word section, section of a protein or a polypeptide, polypeptide, 
it means you've got a really, really huge chain. Lots and lots of, you know, NCC, NCC, NCC going on and on and on. Amino acid, amino acid, you know, all bonded. So maybe you've got a hundred of them. Great big long chain with peptide bonds between them. And we want to draw a section of that. So a section. Then you've got a peptide bond on either end. So if this was a section, instead of completing the bond, completing the nitrogen always forms three bonds. Instead of putting the hydrogen here to show the amine group, or instead of showing um, the COO rather than CO, we would get rid of this because this would be part of the next um, peptide bond and this would be part this would be part of the next peptide bond. So the hydrogen would have come off and the OH would have come off. And so if you're going to draw a section, you have to do these open ends. Open 